You've probably heard by now of the Cordyceps, which is a special species of fungi with a terrifying ability to zombify ants and appear to mind control them. And it sure is a scary thought to consider a fungus controlling an animal a rabbit hole that The Last of Us franchise has explored with a future zombie fungi variant that infects humans. But what if we could learn to control and use fungi first for our own biosensors and maybe even computations? So back to the zombie ant. See, the cordyceps is able to attach to a live ant, get inside the body, and will the ant to move and navigate to a precise location that's optimal for the fungi's liking. Today's video focuses more on the bioelectric and potential computational application of the fungi, but this zombifying behavior keys us in on some hints of amazing specific fungi abilities. So let's focus in on the specifics. See, the fungi appears to mind control the ant, though research indicates this is more likely actually muscle control, though it's still wild to consider that the slow moving fungi is capable of quick decisions or computations to navigate a relatively fast moving ant. Now the interesting part is where exactly the fungi walks the ant to. The location is generally an optimal humidity and temperature for fungi growth. It's usually 10 inches off the ground and it's upside down under a leaf on the north side of the plant. Take a second to think about that. Again, the fungi controls the ant to such a precise set of environmental conditions and this keys us in on remarkable sensory abilities of the fungi. It makes me wonder what's truly functionally happening inside of this organic material I mean, it's some sort of automated computation that takes sensory inputs in and is able to decide or compute when all these conditions are roughly met. These specific sensory input capabilities are measuring temperature, humidity, height, and cardinal direction somehow when it knows to be on the north side of the plant. All of these are useful senses even to us humans. That north side of the plant one is most interesting to me as it likely is detecting magnetic fields to determine that. So that ability for an organism to detect Earth's magnetic fields, it has a name. It's called magnetoreception. Birds actually use it to know where to migrate throughout the year. There was an interesting discussion with Joe Rogan and a podcast guest discussing fungi and how supposedly this slime mold was able to map out the Tokyo subway system in a better way than the engineers in Japan. Now, from my research, it seems the engineers did actually do a better job than the fungi, but that the fungi still did a remarkable job at mapping very close to a realistic usable Tokyo subway map. So this demonstrates the organism doing some sort of computational process to organize its body efficiently to optimize energy usage to gather the food. And, you know, maybe this could have been useful in the early stages of that Tokyo subway design, where the fungi could have done the early rough optimization map, and then engineers go in and refine the fungi map down to some Something that could actually work in Tokyo. Just an idea though. Now maybe you're somewhat seeing how there's computation happening within the fungi and even if we could direct that computation and sensing ability, how would we extract the information? I mean it's not like the fungi can write down their results, right? Well the fungi within itself is clearly communicating with some sort of signaling mechanism and it just so happens that just like all biological systems, including plants, this signaling is detectable as voltage spikes with probes. I mean, this is how brain-machine interfaces like Neuralink will work and currently do work actually, where a separate computer analyzes the voltage spike patterns in a human brain and then attempts to interpret the signal as a given motor action or thought like moving an arm or a leg. So just like that, researchers or anyone can insert probes into the fungi material and measure various patterns of low voltage spikes. If you want to hear in music form what the current decision-making process of a fungi might sound like, well, look no further than Myko Lyko, who's taken various types of fungus and hooked up probes that measures the voltages within the fungi that we just discussed to amplify ambient voltage spikes that the fungi are producing, and then he synthesizes them to make and mix fungi music. The very sounds you're hearing here are achieved by mapping different sounds to different waves of amplitudes of voltages that the fungi are producing, and Michael Lyko has even a 10 minute arrangement of what he calls the cordyceps playing the modular synth, which is produced by that cordyceps species, which is a very close species to the zombie ant fungi. So it isn't just artists measuring and using fungi. There are multiple researchers looking into the electrical and computational potential of fungi, like Professor Andrew Adamatsky, who is the director of the Unconventional Computating Laboratory, and has published papers on this very subject. One was titled, quote, Towards Fungal Computers, and Dr. Mohamed Mahdi Deshibi, and I apologize for any mispronunciations. He has published research with titles such as Electrical Activity of Fungi, spikes detection and complexity analysis. Dr. Deshabi has said the following, by changing the environmental conditions, we can reprogram a geometry and a theoretical structure of the graphics of mycelium networks and then use the electrical activity of the fungi to create computing circuits. This is hopeful, complicated, and wordy, but the idea is sort of that provided certain controlled stimulus, scientists hope they can use the electrical activity properties within the fungus 
and map these complex electrical signals to meaningful interpretations, which they hope can be utilized to somehow develop computing measures. Fungi are weird in that they don't appear to have much specialization going on across the organism's body, so it's a struggle to figure out how or where the analysis and production of signals is happening within the fungi. Or as Dr. Deshavi puts it, determining which part of the embodied system is doing the computation is still somewhat ill-defined. Now, as ridiculous as it sounds to use fungal tissues as part of a computational system, if you break down a current computer to its simplest part, there's little to no intelligence in the individual transistors, for instance, just a predictable behavior of the material, given certain environmental conditions and voltage inputs. So it is possible that fungi tissue could provide a functional behavior when organized in an intelligent way in a much larger system. The potential of fungi tissue as a substrate is high given the many abilities of fungi material in the natural world, but this potential and complexity is what makes arriving at any useful implementations pretty dang difficult. Now the fundamental building blocks of computers being transistors, the material's behavior under given environmental conditions is well understood and characterized, so it's incredibly predictable. The same cannot be said for fungi tissues, as there is a high amount of unpredictability and more inherent complexity to the material that we have yet to understand. In fact, mycelium networks apparently have more variability in their voltage spiking activity when compared to animal neural activity, which makes understanding and analyzing these signals even more difficult. But I personally find this quite interesting, as this complexity that we see in their voltage spiking, I think it's what sort of provides the potential usefulness, but also a huge challenge. So a big push in the field of research currently is in work for original techniques for classifying detecting, and analyzing the fungi spiking activity, which needs understood much better before useful computational implementations can be attempted. I'll quote the paper authors here, so as they say, the results from that improvement in analysis can pave ways for future research on sensorial fusion and decision making of fungi. So here's a fun and very tangible example of voltages within organisms causing actions. In this experiment from Dr. Greg Gage at his TED talk, he demonstrates how this mimosa plant sends an action potential across the plant when a touch is felt on its leaf. This voltage spike is the cause of the leaf that then folds inwards. It's then demonstrated how a Venus flytrap produces an action potential when its sensory trigger hairs inside the Venus flytrap mouth are touched, but the cells within the flytrap are doing slightly more computation for the action of this plant. See, the flytrap doesn't want to waste the effort of closing on a false sensor input that may not actually be caused by a fly. Maybe it's the wind or a piece of dust hitting the, the hair or whatever. So it requires two separate touches within an about 20 second window for it to actually close. This experiment then goes a step further to link the Venus flytrap up to the mimosa plant via wires. So when the flytrap produces its action potential from the trigger hair touch, that voltage spike is carried via the wires to the mimosa plant and it folds its leaves. So you can start to imagine the complexity you might be able to get when linking well understood complex voltage signals together with a far more complex organism such as a fungi. But the fungi science clearly has a long way to go before you are plugging in a fungi compute card into your spare PCIe slot in your gaming PC. Thanks for joining me on this gate and check out my others, such as the video where we discuss why a byte is not actually 8 bits or join me on a journey of trying to determine the actual first ever engineer. This is Jake, and I'll see you guys at the next gate.